If you haven't watched the first part of this series on ordinal models yet, I highly recommend checking that out first. But if you are all caught up, let's jump right back in exactly where we left off. Cumulative probability refers to the chance of achieving a rating at or below a certain level. For example, for a wine rated 3, it's the likelihood of getting a 1, 2 or 3, so everything at 3 and below 3. It's like asking what's the chance this wine is moderately or less bitter. Exceedance probability, on the other hand, represents the chance of receiving ratings above a certain level. Using the same example for a wine rated at 3, exceedance probability would be the likelihood of the wine being rated 4 or 5, essentially asking what's the probability that wine is more bitter than moderate. Together, cumulative and exceedance probabilities effectively split the entire set of probabilities into two clear parts. Cumulative probability includes all outcomes at and below a given rating, while exceedance probability sums all outcomes above it. Now listen to me very carefully. The three concepts I just introduced, added probabilities, a cut-through probabilities, and two parts are very important. Let me unpack it for you and you'll love it. First, if we add the individual probabilities of ratings 1, 2 and 3, we obtain a cumulative probability for rating 3. Similarly, if we add probabilities for ratings 4 and 5, we find the exceedance probability for rating 3. Yes, it's that simple. For example, if we add up the probability of a cold wine having a rating 1, which is 12.6%, and the probability for rating 2, which is 48.1%, we get 60.7%. This means there is a 60.7% cumulative probability that the wine rating is 2 or below. If we now want the cumulative probability for rating 3 or below, we simply add the probabilities of ratings 1, 2 and 3 to get approximately 92%. This shows that there is roughly a 92% chance that our cold wine falls within ratings 1, 2 or 3. But don't just believe me, let me prove it to you. Which brings me to the second important concept, cut. Now get this. To easily calculate these cumulative probabilities, we can use the intuitive QMPROP argument in the immense function instead of the PROP argument used for basic probabilities. That's it! To understand how likely it is to receive a rating less than or equal to a certain level, we choose a cutoff point between ratings. For example, if we cut between ratings 2 and 3, we get the cumulative probabilities of all ratings at or below 2, which is 60.7%. Similarly, if we cut between ratings 3 and 4, the cumulative probability is 92%. This matches what we calculated manually by summing probabilities. Pretty cool, right? But you know what's even cooler? We can use the same MIP function to visualize cumulative probabilities too. This shows the growing accumulation of probabilities as ratings increase. Note that we don't display the cumulative probability for ratings less than or equal to 5, as this would always equal 100%, making it redundant. And have you realized that the cut we introduced acts as another synthetic predictor, even though it wasn't explicitly part of our original model formula? In a model where temperature is the only actual predictor, we now effectively have two synthetic predictors, the outcome rating and the thresholds created by the cuts or different intercepts. This shows why ordinal models are so complex and so difficult to interpret. Because of this complexity, I personally find the summary function recommended in over 95% of ordinal regression tutorials super unintuitive and mostly useless. In contrast, the immense package has actually clarified for me what ordinal models are about. And I wonder if I am alone in this. So please drop me a comment about what you personally find more useful, immense or summary. 
And if you found any value in this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. It really motivates me to create more useful content for you. Similar to basic probabilities, using only one word, pairs, we can calculate the absolute risk difference between cold and warm categories of our temperature predictor by subtracting cumulative probabilities. For instance, at rating 2, subtracting the cumulative probability for warm wine, 14%, from cold wine, 61%, gives us the absolute risk difference of about 47%. Interpretation is again my favorite part. The cumulative probability of having a bitterness rating of 2 or better is 47 percentage points higher for cold wine compared to warm wine. This difference is highly statistically significant. Similar results, significant p-values and non-overlapping confidence intervals are found for all other rating thresholds. Thus, we confidently conclude that cold wine is consistently less bitter than warm wine. Importantly, basic probabilities alone did not deliver this result. Cumulative probabilities provide deeper insights by fully utilizing the ordered nature of ratings. This advantage highlights why ordinal models can uncover information missed by multinomial models, which don't account for the ordering of outcome. We can also calculate absolute differences in cumulative probabilities between rating cat points using the means package by simply switching the position of the cat and temperature arguments. To provide a clearer table, we first use infer equals true to get 95% confidence intervals, then convert the output to a data frame, remove unnecessary columns, and round numerical values to a suitable number of decimal places. These pairwise contrasts tell a new story. For cold wine, the bitterness rating stabilizes at the third level. This happens because the cumulative probability at the third cut point, 92%, is already so high that any further increase to 98% at the fourth cut point is no longer statistically significant. Similar to basic probabilities, dividing one cumulative probability by another gives us a risk ratio, or relative risk. For example, dividing the cumulative probability of 61 for cold wine by 14 for warm wine at rating 2 yields a risk ratio of about 4.47. This means cold wine is roughly 4.5 times more likely to receive a bitterness rating of 2, or better, ratings 1 or 2, a highly significant finding. At the 3 to 4 cut point, the risk ratio is 1.7, meaning cold wine is about 1.7 times more likely to have a bitterness rating of 3 or better. But the most intriguing contrast appears at 4 to 5 cut point. Here, the risk ratio is 1.2, suggesting cold wine is only about 1.2 times more likely to have a bitterness rating of 4 or better and it's not statistically significant. This results as the opposite of the highly significant absolute difference we found previously. It highlights that absolute and relative differences measure different aspects of our data, and thus can yield different statistical conclusions. And that's okay. The practical takeaway is straightforward. If you prefer smoother, less bitter wine, serving it cold is the way to go. Finally, by switching the positions of cat and temperature in our immense code, we can directly compare cumulative probabilities across cat points within either cold or warm wine. Doing so shows that both absolute and relative differences tell the same story. For cold wine, the cumulative probability essentially stops increasing at the third cut point. The relative difference between the cumulative probabilities of 92 and 98 is not statistically significant. By the way, if you have more categories in your response or predictors, the number of contrasts can become overwhelming. In such cases, you can simplify your analysis by specifying particular cut point using the at argument in the immense function. Now, as I previously mentioned, using cut-through probabilities naturally creates two complementary pieces, cumulative probability and exceedance probability. 
these two probabilities always sum to 100%. This means if we subtract cumulative probability from 100%, we get exceedance probability, which represents the likelihood of an outcome exceeding a particular threshold. In practice, to calculate exceedance probabilities using the means function, we simply replace cumprop with xprop. For example, in our wine rating scenario, an exceedance probability of about 39% at the rating cut point of 2 indicates there is a 39% chance that cold wine receives a rating above 2, that is, ratings 3, 4 or 5. In simpler terms, cold wines have only a 39% chance of being rated moderately bitter or higher. Conversely, there is a 61% cumulative probability that cold wines are rated as less bitter, namely ratings 1 or 2. For warm wines, the exceedance probability at rating 2 is approximately 86% meaning there is a pretty high 86% chance that a warm wine is rated as moderately bitter or higher, namely ratings 3, 4 or 5. Clearly, warm wines are much more likely to be perceived as bitter than cold wines. Correspondingly, the cumulative probability of warm wines being rated as less bitter, namely ratings 1 or 2, is just 14%. Visualizing all three types of probabilities gives us a clear summary of ordinal regression. Specifically, if we start with the basic probabilities for each ordered outcome, adding them gives us cumulative probabilities. Then, subtracting these cumulative probabilities from 100% provides exceedance probabilities. Pretty neat, right? By the way, the complete R code and the full video script are available as a PDF for channel members. If you are interested, feel free to join at a coffee level or above. And just like with cumulative probabilities, we can interpret exceedance probabilities clearly by calculating four key insights. First, absolute differences between cold and warm wines at each threshold. For example, at the bitterness threshold between ratings 3 and 4, cold wines are significantly less likely than warm wines to be rated as very bitter, rating 4 or higher. Specifically, cold wines have a 38.3% lower probability of exceeding this threshold. Second, absolute differences between thresholds within each temperature. For cold wines at a 3 to 4 threshold, bitterness noticeably declines. The chance of exceeding a rating of 3 is only 5.9% higher than exceeding a rating of 4. This difference isn't statistically significant, indicating that the increase in bitterness rating begins to fade at higher thresholds. Third, relative differences between cold and warm wines at each threshold. If you find risk ratio above 1 easier to interpret, you can reverse the contrast method. For instance, at the 1 to 2 threshold, warm wines are 1.128 times or 12.8% more likely than cold wines to be rated as slightly bitter or higher. However, this difference isn't statistically significant. In contrast, at the 2 to 3 threshold, warm wines are 2.2 wines or 120% more likely to exceed the rating of 2, moderately bitter or higher. The higher the cutoff, the stronger the relative difference between warm and cold temperature, showing warm wines are progressively more bitter compared to cold wines. Finally, the last piece we can calculate is relative differences between thresholds within each temperature. For example, for warm wines, the probability of exceeding a bitterness rating of 1 is 1.14 times, or 14% higher, compared to exceeding a rating of 2. However, this relative difference isn't statistically significant, suggesting only a minor, uncertain tendency for warm wines to surpass lower bitterness thresholds compared to higher ones. If you made it this far, you are awesome, and I genuinely thank you for sticking with me until the end. I really hope that these two videos have demystified ordinal regression for you, and if they did, please consider to like, comment and subscribe. 
Your engagement signals to YouTube that this content is valuable and can help others to go beyond this summary function.